Good morning. Welcome to the morning service of Berean Baptist Church. We're so glad that you out there are visiting us by way of internet. Uh, if you just uh, tuned in, we're glad that you've done that. If you have tuned in for the Bible Hour, you just heard a great message by our assistant pastor, Brother uh, Aaron Mitchell. And we are thankful that you're uh, tuning in to us. We always like to, would like to hear from some of you. Before we go into God's Word this morning, <clears throat> let me uh, say a, a few words. Uh, we always tr give announcements that when, when we have regular service, try to keep folks up to speed on what's going on uh, there. Uh, <clears throat> Brother Aaron mentioned in, in the Bible study, we have several to pray for. This uh, uh, family one of Brother Gail's family to pray for her. Uh, continue to pray for Sister Pat uh, Croy. Uh, she's doing holding up well she's doing well i uh, talked to her a couple times and we need to pray for her continue to pray for brother don moore he's improving but he also has some issues that he's going to have to get taken care of and so we just need to hold him and pat up in a prayer and i'm sure that he will do do that uh, on it and then <clears throat> continue to be faithful if you will many are uh, we would like to see more uh, with your uh, financial support, your tithes and your offerings, and especially your uh, mission giving uh, there. Uh, until this thing is over, we, we have to uh, have you send it in, and you can send it to me, uh, 20357 Peachland Boulevard, Port Charlotte, 33954, and we'll see that Brother Jan, our treasurer, gets it uh, on it uh, there. And I'm hoping, <clears throat> excuse me, that you are, are have reading the pastor's page. Uh, try to get it every day. Sometimes I miss a day, but uh, we try to keep you up to date. And I called several yesterday, and I've asked the folks I'm talking to, and whoever you might be this morning, to begin to pray. We are going to be praying about resuming services here at the church. Sooner or later, that date has got to come. We have uh, played around with uh, uh, Mother's Day, the 10th of May. I don't know whether that will uh, come to fruition or not, but uh, we'll let everybody know. But I'd like to ask everyone, if you would, to, to make a special time of prayer to ask God to lead us, to guide us, to direct us to know exactly what God wants us to do and when God wants us to do it. So please pray uh, there. Uh, sooner or later, we're going to have to resume services down the road, but I, I, I want to be in God's will. I don't want to be stubborn about it. I don't want to be uh, hard-headed uh, about it. Uh, I want to kind of get the feel of God's people. And if you would email us, or let us know sort of what your feeling is about when we might resume the service. It would kind of help us. So anyway, if you do that, we would appreciate that there. And then we always give a commercial about Berean Baptist Church. There may be some tune in that uh, do not know much about us. We're, we're what we believe and call an old-fashioned, fundamental, independent Baptist church. We teach and preach from the King James Bible, which we believe is the true preserved word of the living God uh, there. We sing from the hymn book. We don't, we don't sing these uh, progressive um, uh, contemporary songs. We believe the old songs have a message that touches the heart. And uh, our people are friendly. Our spirit is warm. And all we ask is when this virus is over, if you just come by and visit us, get acquainted with us, we would love to meet you. So we hope that you will do that. With that in mind this morning, if you have your Bibles, open them up to Mark chapter 4. <clears throat> Brother Aaron's already mentioned it. <laughs> Probably this will never happen again unless God uh, wants it to. And I'm convinced this morning God wanted it to. 
I believe not only, you know, we, we, you, we quote this verse in Romans, all things work together for good to them that love God. And we usually quote that when we're facing some kind of problem or trouble. But I believe that, I believe that includes every phase and facet of our life, whatever it might be. All things work together for good. Well, Aaron preached from this passage of Scripture this morning. I'm going to preach from it as well. My perspective is somewhat different than his, but I will re probably repeat some of the very things that he shared with you. And the reason for that is some of you Baptists out there probably need to hear it twice. Amen. It won't hurt you. Repetition is a good thing. And therefore, you, you say, well, why, why would you do that? Brother Aaron said, told you. <laughs> uh, we don't compare notes. I do not ask him uh, uh, beforehand what he's going to preach. Now, I kid him about that, but I don't, I, I'm not, I don't ask you to, to uh, find out what he's going to preach uh, there uh, on it. We, we leave that up to God. Amen. And God, God knows, listen to me, God knows what we need. Amen. And God know, uh, knew somehow, some way, I prayed about this message, and I really was uh, sort of uh, fighting it, I didn't, you know, but I couldn't get away from it. So there's something here the Holy Spirit is wanting some, somewhere, someplace, somebody to hear this message again. Amen. And so if you got your Bibles, we'll, we'll look into God's Word again. Mark chapter 4. But I want to begin reading uh, verse 1 and 2, if you allow me to do so. And then we will jump over to verse 35. Now, in, in Mark 4, 1, the Bible says, And he, the he being Jesus, he began to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And notice, and he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine. And then it goes on to tell what he was teaching that day. So now let's fast forward, if we will, to verse 35 uh, this morning. <clears throat> and the Bible says the same day, when the eve was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitudes, they took uh, him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awoke him and said unto him, Master, carest not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Let's pray. Father, we come to the throne of grace this morning, needful. <clears throat> and I pray, God, this morning, thou will hide me behind the cross. And Lord, thou will give me liberty and freedom and unction, as you gave Brother Aaron. Lord, that I might preach with freedom and power and authority. God, may you take this message that both Brother Aaron preached and the one that you've laid upon my heart. And oh, God, this morning, we do not know on whose heart these messages will land. But, Father, somewhere out there today, there must be those that need to hear a word from God. There must be some out there today who are living in panic and fear and uncertainty. God, they need to know the peace of God that passes all understanding. And so, Father, we pray this morning as uh, we try to preach, God, in your power and your spirit, that you will take the message by the Holy Spirit, touch the hearts that need to be touched, and speak 
to who needs to be spoken to, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to direct your word, uh, your attention this morning to the words of the Lord Jesus Christ recorded here in these passages of Scripture that I just shared with you to verse 39 where it says, And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Now, Aaron just did a tremendous tremendous message on this passage of scripture and i'm certain there is not a bible student wherever you might be this morning that which is not familiar has not ha had many sermons preached on this have not studied it read for yourself this particular incident here in the life of jesus and his 12 apostles uh where they encountered a vicious and strong and dangerous storm now you find something here uh reason i read verse one and two of chapter four jesus had been teaching all day uh there for instance if you got your bibles let me share something out in in verse three through verse 12 he is teaching the parable uh uh, uh, th uh teaching the parable of the sower and then you find in verse 13 through verse 20, he explains the meaning of that parable. And then you find in verse 21 through verse 25, he teaches the parable of the candle uh, there. In verse 26 through verse 28, he teaches about the mystery of the kingdom uh, there. In verse 30 through verse 34, he teaches the parable of the mustard seed. Now, by the time that all of this teaching was accomplished, we, we got, uh, I want you to look uh, back to verse 35. I, I presume it had been a full day. Jesus had been teaching and preaching, and now it was Eve time. I, I, I believe, they didn't say for sure, but I believe the night was beginning to close in. And so Jesus concluded his uh, uh, sermons and his teaching uh, there. And so he says here in verse 35, uh, and the same day, that's the same day as chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. It was the same day, but it was now evening time. And so Jesus says, let us pass over onto the other side. So what did they do? They set sail to go to the other side. And you find Jesus having ministered and, and taught perhaps all day long. He was weary. And the Bible says he went to the hinder part of the ship and he lay down on a pillow and fell asleep. They had set out to go across the Sea of Galilee. And, and evidently by all oh, about midway across that sea, you find that a fierce storm came up. The wind began to blow. The ship began to rock. The waves began to roar. No doubt, doesn't say, but I've got, I've got, I'll share with you some things. No doubt, the apostles began to struggle to keep the water out of the ship uh, there. But it seemed like after a while, it was a hopeless situation. So they run to Jesus. You know, we, we have a <laughs> tendency to do that, don't we? Sometimes we'll struggle and we, we'll, we'll try to solve a problem. We'll try to get through it. But then when we finally come to our wits end, we'll run to Jesus. Well, nothing wrong with that, but it would have been a lot simpler had they come to Jesus first. But now, anyway, they come to Jesus and they cry out those famous words that Aaron preached on this morning. Master, Master, carest not that we perish? And then he arrived. I believe I can picture it in my mind. I believe he stood up over the over the little boat. He, I believe he raised his hands. He looked out over that boisterous sea. 
And he spoke these words, Peace, be still. And the Bible says, The wind ceased, and the waves calm down. Now, let me say something to you this morning. I've got a different take on this, and I believe it, it, it'll help you as well. I do not believe this was just put in the Bible to tell us a story about Jesus crossing a sea. I, 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 there's much more to that than that on it. I believe there is in this account, God put this in the book to teach us a spiritual lesson that God wanted us to learn uh, in it there. And that's simply this. We who sail the sea of life, we are going to encounter some storms in this life. You can't get around it. You can't ignore it. You can't hide from it. If this church was full, there would be many in front of me would be saying now, amen, preacher. Our, uh, uh, he's, he's comparing here the, the sea of life that you and I live to that of this sea that Jesus and the apostles were crossing that day. Just as they encountered this ferocious storm, it's already been said this morning, I can guarantee to you that as you live the life that God's given you, down, down the path of life, you can call it the sea of life, whatever you want to call it, you are going to have to face some storms in your life uh, therein uh, on it. But I, I'm not, now here's my, here's where I've got a different take on this. I am not so interested and concerned about the storm as I am about their reaction to the storm. I mean, storms come, storms pass, there'll be another storm. So you, so for, storms are a reality. It's not the storm, I believe, that is important here, it, although it is. It, it, it does have a lesson. But the emphasis is not on the storm. The emphasis is on the reaction of the apostles. How did they react to this storm? Well, Somebody, this is not my sermon, but somebody pointed out, I was reading somewhere, uh, they said they were frightened, they were fearful, and they were faithless. <laughs> and you got a three-point sermon. You could preach that. They were frightened, they were fearful, and they were faithless. But their reaction was even that involved their reaction but their reaction is what is the way listen to me this morning i believe the way they reacted to this storm is much the way that god's people are reacting to the storms they face in this life uh, on it there you see someone has said this about storms you've heard this before and i've, I've said it from this pulpit before you're, when it comes to a storm, you're either in one or else you have just come out of one or else you're looking forward to one. <laughs> one of the three. You are in it now. You have you've come out of it or else down the road you can rest assured there's going to be one. Amen. Let me say three things quickly before I get into the reaction here about storms. You can compare literal storms to the spiritual storms that you and I face as Christians. First of all, storms are unpredictable. You say, preacher, what do you mean? Well, it means no one can predict 
when they're going to strike. <laughs> they often appear when least expected. For example, if you've been following the news the last few weeks, um, and in fact, just a few days, out in uh, Tennessee and uh, Alabama and New Orleans and Georgia and across that area, they have been hit with some tremendous storms. And, and, and some of those storms I was reading about caught them unawares. It was at nighttime and it was at the very least time that they were expecting those storms to hit. Now, most of the times they can nowadays predict storms, but, but basically though, they're, they're like, we can predict them coming, but we don't know when they are coming uh, or that they're, it's, you see, that's just, uh, with our Christian life. Our spiritual life, the storms that we face, they happen sometimes when we least expect them. Like Brother Aaron preached, you go, the sun is shining, everything's hunky dory, everything's going good one day, but you wake up the next day and you wonder what happened. The storm has hit. Storms are unpredictable. I got to hurry. Storms are not only unpredictable, but storms are unstoppable. There is nothing that you can do. They may, by radar, they may see the storm coming, but bless God, they can't stop it. It's going to come. And so it is with our storm of life. There's the storms come, and there's not one thing we can do about it. I could say it like this. You have no control over the storm. It's coming whether you want it to or not. You, uh, you can't stop it. it the, sooner or later, you're going to get into a storm of, in your life. Third thing about storms, they're unrelated. Now you might say, what's that, preacher? Well, that means sto all the storms are not the same. <laughs> Some storms are, are huge and humongous and uh, uh, stronger than others. Some last longer than others. Well, as a, as a Christian, we don't, all, we don't all face the same storms some storms are tougher than others some storms are more fierce than others my storm might last longer than your storm or your storm might last longer than mine but there whatever the case there are still storms we've got to face amen on it so as also mentioned this morning, we are facing a tremendous storm right now in our nation. In the life of our nation, not only in the life of our nation, but all over the world. This storm that we're facing right now in America, it is affecting almost every other country in the world. Uh, but I want to say to you, and I hope you'll follow me. I'm not again so concerned about covert 19. I believe it's serious. I believe it's deadly. I believe we ought to do everything we can to do uh, 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 and protect ourselves from it. But listen, what concerns me is the reaction yeah. to the storm. Yeah. What's happening? The storm was there. 
But how did the apostles react to it? I believe there is the spiritual lesson God would have us learn today. Covert 19 is here. That's not the problem. It's here. But how are we as God's people reacting to it? I believe that's what counts. You see, like so many of, the, uh, uh, of those apostles in that boat, many this morning are running around in panic. And as Brother Aaron said, in fear, shaking and hold, uh, holding up their hands cr and cry, And some of them are even crying out, God, don't you care that we might perish in this thing? Well, of course God cares. I was studying up on this message and I read a comment, kind of interested me. I, I, I hadn't really thought of it, I guess. <laughs> uh, Jesus, Jesus knew before they set sail, he knew that storm was coming. If he was God, and you go back, you can read some in the Old Testament, as God, he has control of all things. You believe that, I hope. So Jesus knew they were coming, they were going to get us into a storm. He knew that. But he went back to the hinder of the boat and he lay down. I went to sleep. Perfect peace. Oh, you say he was God. Yes, it is. We was God. But I'm going to come to that in a moment. But Jesus was in control. What I'm trying to say is this. Jesus was already in control of that storm. <laughs> You believe that? Jesus knew. Listen to me. Jesus knew how that storm was going to end. I believe. I believe that. I believe he was God in the flesh. Amen. I believe he uh, and God in the flesh. He knows the past, present, and future. So he knew already. What the outcome was. Let me tell you something this morning. God knows what the outcome of this coronavirus is. is. Amen. And just as God was in control of that situation, though they didn't recognize it at, for at, uh, momentarily, God's in control of what's going on today. So what is our reaction to this? Well, I, I got a, maybe another take on this than anybody else. And if you don't agree, that's fine. But I want us to look at four things in this storm, in this boat, in that moment of panic and fear, the Bible said, Jesus said they were fearful. In that moment when the wind was blowing and the waves were raging, the disciples forgot something. And that's what's happening to us this morning. I think we're forgetting something. And I think we're forgetting the, exactly the same four things that these apostles forgot in that storm. So if I had a title for my message this morning, it would be, who is in your boat? Who is in your boat this morning? Who is it on it? I'm afraid we have forgotten in this Corona-19 crisis 
we've forgotten who's in our boat. I may mention this again, but listen, when Jesus said, let's go to the other side, they were going to go to the other side. <laughs> there was no storm going to stop them. There was no storm going to sink that boat. What I'm saying is, as long as Jesus was in that boat, it was going to get to the other side. And along with that, so were the 12 apostles. But they forgot something. Let's look quickly this morning. Four things they forgot, I believe. In the moment of the panic, in the moment of fear. And we've got so much of that today. Folks, we've got to get over this fear factor. I'll be, uh, I, I want to add uh, to the uh, reason I keep going back to Brother Aaron. He, he has touched on these things so well. We have got to quit believing a lot of what you're hearing. I'm not disputing it's real. I'm not denying that it's lethal. I'm not dispersing that thousands have lost their lives because of it. It is. But it has got people panicking and fearing. I haven't heard this. Well, I haven't heard the statistics on it. But I, they keep telling us when it's all said and done and the dust is cleared, there will probably be more suicides this t during this season than we've ever had before. Not only that, I've heard this. We'll probably have a lot more alcoholics than we ever had before. Why? Because they're turning to the wrong person. Amen. But let's look at it. What did what did they forget? You got your Bibles. I I want I want to share with you. First of all, they forgot whose presence was with them. Number one, they forgot momentarily. I, I admit that, but for that moment. They seem to have forgotten whose presence it was in that boat with them. Why? Because they got so concerned with the wind, with the waves, and the water. And in the attempt to save that boat themselves, they had temporarily forgotten who was in that boat. For a little bit there, I mean, why did he say it? I'll, I'll show you in a moment why I say that. Uh, uh, there in, in it. But let me emphasize again. As long as Jesus was in that boat, that boat was not going to sink. Amen. On it. And when Jesus pointed, wanted to go to the other side, you can rest sure they were going to get to the other side. But they forgot that. Hear me this morning, church. When God tells us not to fear, we ought not to fear. When God tells us we ought to trust, we ought to trust. When God tells us we ought to obey, we ought to obey. Why? Because we have no reason to fear. Jesus is in our boat. Amen. I'm not talking about being foolish. But I am talking about being fearful beyond what you should be. Uh, on it there. Let me share a verse of scripture over in Luke chapter 
12, verse 7. Here's why we ought not to fear. Why, why should we not fear? Folks, it's not just the world out here running around uh, uh, fear, f afraid to move. Uh, can't, oh, I'm not getting out of the house. I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, fear. Why should we not be afraid? I'll give you the Bible, you believe it or not. Luke chapter 12, verse 7. Here's what Jesus says in Luke 12, <clears throat> verse 7. He says, but even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than sparrows. <laughs> Listen, you are more value to God. And if you belong to God, you're truly saved. You're born again. You know Him as your Savior. You do not have to have an unusual fear, whatever comes. But notice what it also says in, in verse 32 of the same chapter. This is, this is pretty quick. This is Jesus talking, not Brother Fred. He says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Folks, I'm telling you, they were fearful because they forgot instantaneously. It wasn't long. Of course, they woke up quick. But for, uh, for a, a, a moment's time, they forgot who was in the boat with them. And I'm afraid that's what's happened to a lot of Christians today. They've forgotten who they say they believe in. The, is your faith really genuine? Do you really believe this morning God can take care of you no matter what the storm is? They forgot who was in the boat. Number two, here's another thing they forgot. I'll show you. They forgot His unfailing promises to them. Let me say something to you this morning. There's nothing that will see you through the storm like recalling and relying upon the promises of Almighty God. There are literally thousands of promises in God's Word. And I want to say this on the authority of God's Word. God will keep every promise God has promised. Hey, it's not dependent upon whether you believe those promises or not. <laughs> those promises are based upon God's word, and those promises will be kept whether you or I believe it or not. That's right. Amen. They forgot what kind of promises. Well, there's a thousand of them. But let me share with you quickly. I believe this will help you. There are three promises in this Corvair, or whatever you want to call it, 19. Three promises we need to grab hold of to see us through the storm. I mean this. Uh, if you don't have these promises, you're not relying upon these promises, you do not believe these promises, you're going to be like these apostles. You're going to uh, run around in panic and fear. What are they? Well, first of all, we have the promise of His protection. Amen. You find in 2 Thessalonians, I, I like to lift the Bible back up what I say. 2 Thessalonians 3, chapter 2, uh, excuse me, 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 2 and verse 3. He says, <clears throat> Paul writing to this church, he says, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, 
For all men have not faith. <laughs> I, I think we all can testify to that. And I'm wondering even how strong some of our so-called Christians' faith is. But then notice what he says in verse 3. But the Lord is faithful. Hey, God's going to be faithful whether we are or not. But the Lord is faithful. Who shall establish you? Now look at this. And keep you from evil. We need to rely and, and believe and trust that God will watch over his people. Amen. God will take care of you. God will protect you. I believe that. We, we need to remember that. Remember the Bible says he will never leave you nor forsake you. And then Jesus said on one occasion, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Boy, I mean, that's, going, that's a long time. I'm with you always. Not just when the sun's shining. Not just when everything's going great. Not when the storms fall. He's with us always. I believe that, and I can say amen to that. Amen. So we need to remember his, uh, the promise of his protection. Not only that, we need, secondly, to remember in, in times like this. Here, now listen, here's where we get down where the rubber hits the road. We need to remember the promise of his provision. His provision on it. I, got, I, just, I want to read you something from Psalms. Psalm 65, oh my, boy, did this bless my heart. I wanted to share it with you. Psalm 65, let me say this to you. God is going to take care of you, and God is going to provide what you need. Amen. I was up at uh, Sam's <laughs> yesterday morning. I can't describe the crowd. I don't know what I don't know how many were inside, but I I can say honestly I just had to glance over. I just drove in a lot and drove off. They were lined up with baskets all the way almost from the street down around the uh, auto parts place, back up like this, and back there waiting to get in. What is going on? Well, I got to have my toilet paper. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get my, uh, uh, whatever the stuff you use, uh, you know, my cleaning stuff. I got to have it. My bleach, I got to get it. Those things are necessary. I understand. Don't get misunderstand. <laughs> They're necessary. But you don't need to go into a panic. God's going to take care of you. Can I have an amen? I wish I, I'll say amen, Brother Carden. That's good preaching. Amen. Psalm 65. Listen to this. Look at verse 9. Boy, I tell you, this bless my heart. It says, Thou visit to the earth and water it. Thou greatly enriches it with the river of God, which is full of water. Thou preparest them corn. <laughs> when, thou when thou hast so provided for it, thou waterest the ridges thereof abundantly. Thou settlest the furrows thereof. Thou makest it soft and with showers. Thou blessest the springing thereof. Thou crownest the year with thy goodness, and thy paths drop fatness. They drop upon the pastures of the wilderness, and the little hills rejoice on every side. The pastures are clothed with flocks. The valleys also are covered over with corn. They shout for joy. They also sing. Folks, Jesus said in the book of Matthew, if God could take care of the ravens, the birds, 
of the field, how much more can God take care of us? Amen. Why do, why do we fall apart? Why? Because we forget the promises of God. Paul wrote in Philippians, My God shall supply all your need. He didn't say needs. I got a lot of folks got, quote that wrong. It's singular. God will supply all your need. What's that mean, preacher? It means He will give you what He knows you need. Now, He sometimes gives us more than we need. That's good. Sometimes He gives us needs that we don't even really need. <laughs> That's better. But, if you don't believe that, get you a pen and, and mark it out. In this pandemic, we need to believe and, and trust, and, but I not, we need to know God's provision. He will take care of us. Amen. And then the third thing we need to know is the promise of his peace. I'm going to get I'm going to end I'm going to end on that just like brother Aaron did. The promise of his peace on it. You see, in a time like we're facing right now, whether it might be a, a physical need that you have, it might be a financial need that you have, it could be for some of you a spiritual need that you have. In a time like this, you can find a peace that this world out here knows nothing about. Those are three promises you can rely upon in the storm. Now, there's a lot of other problems, but those three, in the time of storm, understand God will protect you. God will provide for you. And God will give you the peace that passeth all understanding. Amen. They forgot that for momentarily. But here quickly is the third thing they forgot. Let's go back to our text. They forgot where cometh their power. You see, the ship was filling up with water. And they could not keep it afloat on their own. Now, why do I say that? I want you to notice something. I'm just trying to show some things maybe you've never seen before. Why, why would I? Why, I believe, I really believe they tried earnestly to bail out that ship for a while. Doesn't say that, but, I, but it, there's, a, there's a hint here that that's, that's true. What is that hint? Well, look at verse 37 of Mark 4. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. Now, they didn't wait till that ship got full until they ran to Jesus. I mean, they just didn't sit there and watch the waves go over the side of that boat and over the bow of that boat. And they I don't believe that. I, don't, I, I believe they were human. They didn't wait until that boat was completely full. Just sat there and wait. I believe you. I'll ask them when I get there. But I believe in the meantime, they were, had, were doing everything they could to bail out that ship. But there came a time <laughs> they couldn't keep it afloat on their own. It was getting, it was full. It was, hey, you, I, 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 I'm a big boater. Not, I don't get to go like I used to. 
I love the water. I love boating. And I think Aaron mentioned this this morning. As long as that boat's in the water, everything's great. When water gets in that boat, I begin to panic. <laughs> I'm serious. I got, I've been caught in two or three storms on my boat. And I panic. <laughs> I'll be honest. But I, I started doing something before the boat got full. I didn't wait till the boat got full and then, and then said, well, I, now I think I better do something. The boat's full of water. I did everything I could. I, went, I was never in something like this, but in, I, I, I've been in similar situations where water is coming. Betty could tell you about one we had uh, coming back uh, in Tampa. Water was coming over the bow of that boat just in just like a tsunami. I was standing up there trying to guide it and keep it going. Soaked to the gills. Well, we got through it. But I guarantee you, I was praying the water wouldn't get wouldn't fill that boat up. Amen. Uh, there on it. You see, what I'm getting at is this. I presume that they didn't wait till the boat was full before they at least attempted to bail out some of the water. But they were doing it in their own power. They were struggling uh, there. And I just asked this question. How often do we try to go through the storm in our own power. We try to find the solution ourselves. We try to rely upon our own ability and our own power until the waves become so mighty, the wind becomes so fierce, we finally do what they did. And don't kid me, you, you, if you, I guarantee everyone listening to my voice have been here at one time or another. You found yourself in a storm you could not handle. You did everything you could to solve it. But there came a time when you went and called on Jesus. Get me out of this. You're going to let me die. Get me out of this. That's what they did, finally. But I got to close. There was one other thing they forgot, I find in this text. They forgot to rest in his peace. Verse 39 and 40. And he arose and rebu rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. And he said, notice this, and he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Follow this, and I'm done. Had they had faith in God's presence, had they had faith in God's promises, had they had faith in God's provision, they would have had the peace in the midst of the storm. Amen. What was it? They had forgotten the presence of Jesus was with them. They had forgotten the promises that God had made to protect them. And they had forgotten that God was able to provide and take them to safety. All because of lack of faith. I ask you this morning, in this present storm that we're passing through, or maybe 
As I said a moment ago, you are in the midst of another kind of storm. Maybe you right now are facing financial storm, and we understand many people are because thousands and thousands are out of work right now. Maybe you're one of them facing a financial storm. Maybe you're facing right now, in our, in our church we've got these kind of folk. Maybe you're facing a physical storm. Maybe, maybe you don't have the virus, but you, you've got some other things that God needs to take care of. Maybe right now, this moment, you're facing a spiritual storm. I ask the question in closing, who is in your boat? Is he your Lord and Savior? Is he the captain of your life? Are you trusting him to see you safely to the other side? Or are you attempting to face the storm yourself? You're attempting to struggle against the wind and the waves. You're attempting to bail out the boat the best you can. Has this storm of coronavirus got you panicky and fearful? I just close saying this. You need to do what they did. You need to come to Jesus. And you need to call on Jesus. And you need to put your faith and trust this morning in Jesus. If you're here this morning under the sound of my voice, and you do not know this Lord and this Savior as your personal Lord and Savior, I would beg you this morning, you are you're either have come out of a storm, you're in a storm, or you're going to get one. Who is in your boat? If Jesus is not in your boat, would you bow with me and ask Him this morning to forgive your sin, repent of that sin, call on Him, and trust Him and He will see you through the storm. Let's pray. Father, I do not know who's watching or listening. I have no idea. But God, I pray this morning that no doubt there is good possibility there's some that needed Brother Aaron's message this morning and needed this message today as well. God really gave them a double dose. They need to understand this, this might be God's last warning. Lord, I pray if they do not know you as Savior, they will even right now bow their head by faith and confess their sin, repent of it, and ask Jesus to save them. I pray, God, they might look up a pastor somewhere a preacher that knows what it's all about and talk to them. I pray, God, they might even call Berean Baptist. We'd be more than happy to talk to them about Jesus. We thank you. We thank you for those that have listened in this morning. We thank you for our church. And most of all this morning, praise God, I thank you in the time of this storm, Jesus is in our boat. To Him give the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you this morning.